Hi. So we're all familiar with the uh, standard oscilloscope. This is a two-channel oscilloscope, the uh, Tektronix 2213A, uh, which is a uh, relatively lower-end um, analog oscilloscope with a CRT. And what I'm displaying here is a standard sine wave at about uh, 10,000 hertz. And um, so that's the standard use of the oscilloscope, which is to display a voltage versus a time division. However, a lesser known feature of most two channel oscilloscopes is the XY mode, where the uh, voltage applied to channel 1 um, will uh, be represented by the X axis, and the voltage applied to channel 2 will be displayed in the Y axis, with the origin being in the left lower corner. So if we switch to XY mode, and in this scope it's just switching the time base to XY, right here, some other scopes may have a button that you can push or some other selector. And what we see here all of a sudden is we have a straight line instead of the sine wave. And why is that happening? Well, um, the as you recall, the sine wave is sinusoidal, so um, the voltage increases, goes back to zero, goes negative, then goes back to zero. So in effect, and that's happening on channel one only, so only the x-axis is being affected, there's no voltage being applied in the y-axis mode. So what's happening is that the voltage is increasing and then decreasing very rapidly, um, and um, that's giving us a line simply because the uh, phosphorus uh, atoms that are getting excited by the electron beam from the CRT are not having, uh, they're producing a light emission which is not having time enough to decay uh, before being refreshed again um, at the frequency we're applying the voltage changes at. So we get a line. If we use a low frequency, let's see if we can slow down that. And here you see the line moving, the point moving back and forth, um, but it's not producing a line because it's not fast enough. So we increase the frequency, and we can start seeing a line forming, but we still get some flicker, we increase the frequency some more, and we get a solid line. So this is fine and great. So what can we use this for, for fun? Well, uh, one of the uh, interesting uses is to use the XY mode to actually create drawings on the CRT screen um, through uh, the use of a microcontroller or a computer. So I'm not inventing anything new here, uh, but uh, my angle on this is I'd like to do this using a Texas Instruments TI-99 for a computer. And the theory behind it is we feed voltages um, on the uh, X and Y channels so that we get a point and we vary these voltages um, to create a pattern and if we do the variation fast enough then we will get lines connecting the points and we will get a picture on the screen. So here's the circuit for the uh, digital to analog converter uh, based on the R2R ladder design and uh, you can find uh, uh, an explanation um, for this design on Google or on YouTube quite easily and there's also a reference video um, in uh, my log entry. Um, because the uh, parallel port is 8 bits on the Texas Instruments computer um, and we need two channels, um, we therefore have four bits dedicated per channel and uh, so we have the digital input for the X channel here and the ones for the Y channel over here and um, out comes here the analog voltage for the X and Y channel um, and uh, these um, will be connected to the oscilloscope to produce an image. Uh, fairly simple design um, and uh, works quite well. So here's the um, digital to analog converter based on the R2R ladder design uh, which I created and it's really a uh, very simple 
uh, device. It's uh, I use the perf board with uh, point to point connections and um, we can see uh, you know we have the connector for the parallel port here um, and we have the various resistors the two capacitors and this is ground and over here um, we see we have the points the channel X and channel Y connectors which will be used um, to connect to the oscilloscope. Alright, so why don't we go ahead and wire it up and uh, you can see over here we have X and Y um, with a I'll get close here with a numbering of the uh, data lines for the parallel port. The order is very important in order to get appropriate uh, voltages through. So um, we start by connecting the ground. Okay. And by the way, this is a breakout board which is connected, uh, a parallel breakout board which is connected to the parallel port. Uh, cable over here um, and that goes to the back of the Texas Instruments RS-232 card. Um, and then we have the lines, um, the data lines going from D7 over here to D8 over here, I'm sorry, to D0. And so um, with D0 being the high order bit and D7 being the lower order bit. And so we're going to go ahead and connect those. Um, and there we go. Just get all this connected up. Pretty simple to do. over here for the data lines. All right, so that's the last one. And then we bring in our oscilloscope probes. This is channel one. And we'll hook this up over here. channel probe goes on the other side and ground is over here. So yeah, it's kind of a rat's nest of wires, but it does work. So that's the basic connection. Um, and um, we have the oscilloscope in XY mode. So now we'll go ahead and uh, start up the Texas Instruments computer and see what that gives us. So here we are. Um, we're going to go ahead and uh, run a uh, program I called OSC Draw for Oscilloscope Drawing, which is written in Extended Basic. And what that program does is it allows me to edit an actual uh, drawing um, in Extended Basic and the program will then figure out all the coordinates and convert those into a uh, digital signal that would be sent to the parallel port which contains information about the appropriate voltages for the X and Y uh, coordinates. And then that uh, would be sent out to the digital to analog converter and then onto the oscilloscope to display an image. Um, and uh, because we are using an 8 bit port um, for the parallel port on the TI, that 
and we have to use two channels for that. We need two channels for that. So we have to divide the port in two. So that means we have only four bits available per channel. And um, that will basically limit our resolution to 16 values per channel from 0 to 15 because it's 4 bits only. And uh, therefore the maximum uh, drawing area we can get is a 16 by 16 uh, area which gives you 256 quote unquote pixels. Um, it's small but that's a limitation we have to work with. Um, and uh, it's still uh, surprisingly good for some simple graphics. So why don't we uh, create a graphic. Uh, let's go ahead and just uh, say we're going to create an arrow just because it will be cool. So the first thing we do is um, we draw the figure so that we can visualize it. Oops. Like so. Okay. So that's an arrow. Now what we need to do is we need to uh, indicate where the uh, vertices of the figure are. Um, by that I mean it's the points where the uh, oscilloscope, the coordinates where the oscilloscope will uh, draw the points on the screen. And then if we vary the frequency of drawing of the points on the screen, on the oscilloscope screen, then we'd be able to get connecting lines in between. So we just have to make sure we create the appropriate sequence here order is important and so these uh, dots represent the vertex points where the beam will connect with there we are. Now technically it's not necessary to draw the figure first you can straight go to vertex uh, point setup but it's easier to do it when you have the figure in front of you so what will happen here is that the electron beam will go from one point to the other following this order here. And if we do this fast enough repeatedly, then we'll get um, a line connecting all the dots and a figure. So that's a basic uh, image. And so we're going to go ahead and um, send it to the oscilloscope and see what we get. And the way we do it is press P. Now he's going to ask me to rotate, we'll talk about that in a minute. Let's say no, we're not going to rotate, we're just going to send it as is. And there we go. And now let's move on to the oscilloscope. And here we are. This is our arrow um, as drawn on the screen, oscilloscope screen. It's a faithful representation of what we drew um, in the program. So it's being uh, redrawn fast enough that we're getting, um, uh, you know, we're beating the um, fading of the phosphorus excitation, um, and we're getting a basically persistence of the image on the screen. Cool. Now the other uh, feature I have added is the ability to rotate this image in the x y axis uh, back and forth. So let's see uh, if we can do that. So here's the same image again of the arrow. This time we're going to go ahead and rotate it in the x-axis. So we press S for rotate. And now it's going to pre-process the information. What it's doing is basically um, mapping, the remapping the vertex points around the center of the image using a, a sinusoidal function, a sine function. So basically uh, the points will start at zero, then we'll map out to the maximum of uh, one and minus one, and then remap back to zero. So it will give the illusion that the figure is actually rotating back and forth in the x and y axis. So why don't we 
uh, move back to the oscilloscope and see what the result is. And here we are. There's the arrow being rotated back and forth in the X axis. Now notice that the image is definitely more flickery and far less bright. Um, and uh, you can see the uh, point of uh, light where the electron beam is moving back and forth uh, to be uh, much more brighter because it's not moving fast enough. And the reason for this is that there are a lot more points to display and um, I had to create a delay between each rotation frame in order to make it uh, uh, visible otherwise all the frames will run together and it will be a uh, glorified mess on the screen. Um, and unfortunately the TI-99 for a computer is not fast enough or at least this parallel port is not fast enough um, to be able to display rotation um, in a uh, really clear uh, matter. Um, this is the best I could do under the current uh, hardware constraints but it does demonstrate the idea. So that's basically um, it. Um, this is really an interesting application, fun one. Not sure if it's really useful but actually it may be useful as a, uh, as a demonstration at uh, some convention um, you know to show off uh, some of the capabilities of the TI computer. Alright, so that's it for now. Uh, all the gory details of this project can be found as usual um, on my uh, blog uh, entry and uh, you can find the link in the description. Thank you for watching.